computer. All right, team. Okay, so we're on week three here. Um, to, today, we're going to talk about um, the lead source, your, your sphere of influence, and, and your past clients. Okay, this is the most important. This is going to be the most productive lead source that each one of you has. And, and you're going to, you, you need to plan your business to where 80% of your business comes from your sphere of influence. All right. I said, let me say it again. 80% of your business needs to come from your sphere of influence. And when you develop a great sphere and you're, and you're marketing them and you're talking to them and you're staying in touch with them over time, this is probably going to be your, your biggest generator of referrals. Okay, so 80% of your business and then your greatest number of referrals is, is going to come uh, from your sphere. Okay, now when we talk about sphere, right, it becomes who is, is in your sphere, right? And this is, this is you know, to, to qualify this, the, when I talk about sphere, you may have um, another lead source planned against some of these folks. Um, that that may bridge between your sphere and another lead source, but these are the folks that you don't necessarily have another plan for. So um, I will tell you, uh, let me just throw a couple out there. Friends and family, um, coworkers in a job, uh, you might have college friends, um, there might be some, some teachers out there that, that you want to engage with, but if these are folks that are not necessarily built um, have a you have a plan built around engaging them and, and drawing business from them. So let me ask you this question. Where who are some who are some folks, and this is where I want to be a little interactive. Who are some folks that you would consider in your sphere that maybe I just didn't listen to or didn't list? Throw them out there. Janice, um, go ahead. Is that just Kim? people you have like oh it's rain rain okay outdoor, go ahead rain. outdoor activities i have a, a women's hiking group women's hiking group um, mm -hmm. okay and i try and hike with them at least twice a month okay and and so just out of curiosity how are how did you develop this women's hiking group um i found it on facebook when i moved here okay all right, so um, so it's a it was a pre-established group. Yeah. Okay. So Rain, knowing that I know that you work at REI, you could tie those two together, and you could probably do something pretty special with the with with that women's hiking group, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk a little bit more about that uh, in the future, right? Um, okay. Any others, anybody else in your sphere? What other groups of people could be in your sphere? I work a lot with Special Olympics. So um, volunteers and parents of the athletes. Yep, absolutely, 100%. What a great niche uh, to be part of. Good, who else? I'm gonna pick on somebody, one more. We we're talking about outdoor activities, um, skiing, just chairlift lines. Everyone's got a late waiting line. That absolutely right. What's to say you don't put a cold little banker sticker or some kind of a CB um, piece of swag somewhere on your on your clothing, right? That it would be that would allow uh, allow people to go. Oh, you're in real estate. <laughs> I mean, what, what an amazing conversation starter that would be while you're sitting in line. So how long, Nick, how long are your typical lift lines? What first, where do you um, be and, and, and where, what, how long are the lift lines? It depends, you know, outside of Bozeman, Big Sky, Bridger, you know, it could be hop right on, uh, but on powder days, uh, local hill, it could be 45 minutes. 45 minutes, right. Okay. You can, you can get to know some people. You, you can get to know some people really, really, really quick. So good. All right. So the, the, the dots there on, if you're, if you're filling out your sheet there, what, what I really want you guys to be thinking about is who is in your sphere? Where are they at? Who can you be, who can you be engaging with your sphere? So those lines are all about you. Don't, don't necessarily put what I'm telling you to do. Um, those, those are all about, being this being uh, individual. 
Let me give you a couple more. Um, ladies. I don't, okay, so I don't have this problem, okay? But ladies, you, you guys have hairdressers? You go to the hairdresser? Yeah? And how long does it take for them to do your hair? Throw it out there. Somebody. At least two hours. At least two hours, right? Guess what? That, that's a great person to put in your sphere, right? Because if they're spending two hours with, some other clients, you think that they get to know those clients pretty well, right? Do you think that when they're th when those clients are thinking about buying or selling that they probably are going to tell their hairdresser at some point in there, right? And so wouldn't it be amazing if that hairdresser goes, hey, oh, by the way, you need to talk to, here's their card because you've left cards uh, with your hairdresser. I mean, that's, that's, that's a great person to, to put in your sphere, right? How about lenders? Think getting to know several lenders, three or four or five lenders, put them in your sphere, engage them, you know, be talking to them once a month or once a quarter, right? And be asking the question, hey, do you have anybody that's looking to buy? Have you had anybody come in and, oh my goodness, the interest rates are high, but do you know anybody that's, that is planning to, that's, that's thinking about buying right now? Can I help them, right? But until you gauge them, until you put them in your in your sphere and build a plan around them, they're not going to know who you are. Okay. All right. So this next the, the next part of this is connection, right? We all want to connect, but like I said earlier, we don't want to sound like a used car salesman. And that is, I think, one of the biggest biggest challenges we all have is hey we want to connect with our sphere but we don't necessarily know know how to ask for the business and not sound like a used car salesman and i will tell you that um, it really comes down to um, as you engage with them being being consistent and we talked about it a couple of weeks ago but the, cons the commitment and consistency that you engage them right so, and, and, and what I mean by this is, as you know, from the commitment perspective, if you're calling and checking in, and you're calling and checking in frequently, you're remaining top of mind. And that's the whole goal is you want to be top of mind. So when that particular client comes to them that says, hey, I'm looking to, to buy a house, that they immediately think of you and refer that particular buyer to you, right? Another way to do this is you can keep your spheres of influence updated on the market data. And if you're not following the numbers, you need to be following the numbers, right? So what market data, what conditions are out there? What questions can you answer for them so that you become that authority figure for them, right? Another way to, another way to, to stay connected with your sphere is um, to share your knowledge on service providers, so if you become that resource of, that somebody calls you up and goes, hey, you know what? I'm thinking about um, painting some house, painting a, a couple rooms in my house. Who's a good painter? And you can provide that, that, that particular service provider to them. Um, hey, uh, I've had people call and go, um, hey, do you know a good electrician in town? At which point I will provide them my, electri my electrician of choice. So, but it's that knowledge. You become that knowledge broker. And you're, you're really providing them a lot of free value um, to them on a weekly, on a monthly, on a quarterly basis, right? So we talked about that's, that's kind of the commitment when we talk about consistencies, um, they will get to know and they will get to expect a call from you, right? I've got one lender in town um, in Grand Junction that calls me every single Monday. Every single Monday, like clockwork, about 11 o'clock on Monday morning, I know he's going to call me. And we're going to chat. He's going to tell me all about what he's what he's seen in the market. I'm going to share what he's going to be in the market. He always asks me, hey, um, do you have anybody that's looking to buy or sell? And I always ask him the same question back. Hey, do you, do you have anybody that, that's come in and is getting a loan right now? Or maybe looking to be ready in six months. How can I talk, how can I help them for as a real estate agent? Okay. There's other times where people come uh, that people come to expect a phone call from you. Birthdays. 
holidays, significant events in their life. I will tell you, hey, who, who trolls Facebook? All the time, right? And are you watching your clients on Facebook? And if they've got a significant event that just happened in their life, maybe they got married, maybe they just got a new dog, maybe they just, um, you know, they they bought a new car, something along those lines. Those are all great times to reach out and just say, hey, congratulations. Hey, good job. Hey, call them up. Hey, I saw you just got a new puppy. Absolutely cute, darling. Love it. What's its name? You know, and, and then strike up a conversation around them. Okay. Another one is house house anniversary or house anniversary. Does anybody do that? Did anybody make calls on a home anniversary? You know, what, what would it look like if you got or you gave everybody a call on every time they bought a house or the, on the, 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 the anniversary that they closed on a house? Do you think that they would keep you top of mind? Do you think you'd remain top of mind for them? That's an amazing way to stay in touch with your folks. Hey, congratulations on the first year in your home. How's it been? You know, what, you know, would you, are you, are you guys doing any upgrades? Are you thinking about what's the plans for the house? Are you, you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But my point is you're staying in touch with them. So now question when we talk about sphere is how often do we, do we need to connect with them? And I will tell you that all these folks in your sphere at a minimum, you need to maintain, um, maintain it once a quarter, talk to them once a quarter uh, or engage with them once a quarter. So how do we do that? Well, you can always call them, right? You can text them, email. How about a quick video? Can you imagine going, hey, it's Jimmy here. Hey, congratulations on your first year in your home. I'm going to be calling you later today, but just want to say, hey, you're amazing and awesome. And I look forward to catching up with you here in a little bit. And then send that off to them. I mean, uh, how, how cool that would that be? Um, lenders, how many people get pop buys from lenders? Right? Or they're always in your face, right? They want to be, become top of mind. How about if you remain top of mind for them? Maybe drop, you know, pop buys. Um, who does handwritten notes? Does everybody do handwritten notes? Good. Greg, I love it. Joey, good. Love it. Chrissy, amazing, right? Handwritten notes. Um, how does it make you feel when you get a handwritten note from somebody? Anyone? Good. It feels good. like they put a lot of thought and effort. Exactly. Exactly. It so feels like you just weren't a number. Like someone actually cared enough to handwrite something. You're so, right. And yeah. I'm, I take it another level because... I'm a crafter, so I make my own cards. Beautiful. Yeah. I make cards. Right. So when somebody gets a handwritten note, it makes you feel good. So why not turn around and reciprocate? Or why not use that, that, that particular strategy to go, hey, listen, let me do two, three, four handwritten notes to, to people in my sphere just saying, hey, congratulations on, hey, happy birthday for, hey, well done on, hey, I love your new whatever it is. Um, the, those are all incredibly valuable where people go, you know what? Yes, you took, took the time to provide, you know, just took the time to think about me and, and send me a note. Okay. So those are all real active ways, uh, to, to, to stay in touch with folks. Um, I will tell you that the company has quite a few campaigns that you can use to stay top of mind with your sphere as well. Okay. We've got the monthly newsletter and actually the monthly newsletter has been combined now with the month, monthly market update. So for each one of each one of the areas, there's a monthly newsletter, monthly market update that gets sent. Um, we've got the quarterly market updates that get sent. And then there's a holiday. Uh, th there's a holiday campaign that we have. And so if your folks aren't set up on those particular those particular campaigns, that's it. This is an easy way for you or for the company to come alongside you and help you provide some value to your to your clients. Okay. Is there anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about? Kim, are you tracking on these? I'm just going to ask you because I know you're you're fairly new into this. Yes, I am. 
Okay, we good. We were just talking about handwritten notes at our meeting yesterday. Okay, good. How about the, the, the monthly newsletter and market report? Are you tracking that campaign? Uh, I have not started that yet. Okay. Um, and then the quarterly market report and then the holiday, um, the, the, the holiday campaign. So if you haven't signed, I, every, every person that, that hits my database gets signed up for those three. Period. End of story. Because now I know that once a month they're getting touched with an email. Once a quarter they're getting uh, a market update. And then every major holiday that pops up, they're getting a, an email from me. They're all branded to me. They've already, they've all got my face on them. Um, and it's just something that's a fix it and forget it. And that's a beautiful thing is it's a fix it and forget it type of a, of a, of a campaign. Okay. Okay. So we've talked about how we've talked about um, um, kind of when to talk to them. Now we've got to talk about what to say to your sphere, okay? And how do you start that conversation? How do you have that conversation without sending like a used car salesman? And it's simple. It's the Ford conversation. Has anybody heard this before? Who's not heard this before? Okay. Okay, good. Ford. Okay, here's what it stands for. Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams and desires. Okay, F-O-R-D. So it's going to sound something along the, these lines. Let's see here. Um, who, who do I want to, who, who am I going to pick on here? Uh, Joey, I'll pick on you for a minute. Okay. Okay, so you're going to be, you're going to be my client that I'm calling up. All right. Okay. All right. So ring, ring, ring. Hey, Joey, Jimmy Clegger here. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Hey, how's the family? They're doing great. Are they? Are they? Um, so what's, uh, tell me about what everybody's doing in the family. Kids are back at school. Husband's working. I'm back at work. So good. All busy. Good. How, how's, how's school going for the kids? They're doing good. They like, they're happy to be back. Good. Is mom happy to have them back in school? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, um, how's, how's work going? Work's been good. It's been busy. Yeah. Are you staying busy? I am. Good, good. And so this this is kind of an awkward one because I'm I'm asking another realtor, you know, about, about work. Um, but at this point, you're gonna have a you can have a conversation, see what they're doing, see how the job's going, see if they're up for any kind of promotions, um, at something along those lines, right? So hey, how was how was the summer? It was really busy, a lot of traveling. A lot. Okay. So tell me, tell me about the travel that you did. Uh, we went to Wyoming, we went to Salt Lake, went to California, okay. and then we had friends here visiting for a week. Beautiful. All, all travel. All travel. Good. What'd you guys do in Wyoming or where'd you guys go in Wyoming? We stayed with a friend that has 106 acres. And so we did some horseback riding. We got to see a lot of Buffalo and, um, a lot of barbecuing. That, that sounds great. So um, going into the winter now, what what's the plans for the winter? Uh, the winter, we're hoping to get the kids some uh, snowboarding lessons this year. Okay. Where, where do you guys, where do you guys snowboard, ski and snowboard at? Um, we just come up into the South Hills here, um, okay. the Magic Valley. Okay. So lo local place? Yes. <clears throat> but, just but an no. hour away. An hour away. Yeah. We've got a, a local place about 45 minutes away. It's, uh, you know, it's got one, one lift line, everything comes into one to the base. We can just turn the kids loose on the, on the, the hill. That's awesome. So, well, Hey, um, you know, looking forward, any, any big plans for the future? Any big life changes happening? Um, thinking about maybe upgrading, downgrading, you know, of course I'm in real estate. Uh, any thoughts of, <laughs> You know, buying or selling or selling your home, upgrading, downgrade, you know, getting smaller thoughts there. Been thinking about selling and moving into a single level because we have the two story house right now. Amazing. Okay. So tell me more about, okay. So you want to, you want to get down to a single level. What's, what's the driving factor there? Um, I have bad arthritis, so I can't get up and down the stairs. That's easy. Okay, so you, you just don't want to do the stairs anymore. I don't want to do the stairs. 
Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Um, four bedroom, three bedroom. What are you thinking? Four bedroom or a three bedroom with an office would be great. Okay, good. Okay. So that's, that's good to know. Um, so at this point, I'm going to really kind of start digging in a little bit with what, what she's looking for. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to drive a timeline because remember, if we go back to the funnel, I want to try to put her into the funnel um, and want to figure out exactly, you know, how, how far out she is. So I kind of figured out her motivation and now I want to figure out kind of where she falls into the funnel so I can plug her into the, to the funnel appropriately. Okay. okay. I'm going to pause here and say that during the occupation convert part of the conversation, there's usually they're going to they're going to reciprocate as you're kind of going back and forth in this conversation. They're normally going to ask you at some point in there. Oh, so um, are you still in real estate? Or are you still selling homes? And I'm going to say, yep, yeah, I sure am. And then what what is the next question that they're probably going to ask? Anybody? How's the market? How's the market? Yeah. Right? And so what's the response? Let me, somebody, how, what's your response? Somebody that doesn't know what I'm going to, what I'm going to coach here for a second. Somebody that that's never, how's, how's the response or what's your response going to be? Greg, what's your response to how's the market? It all depends on whether you're a buyer, seller, or looking to rent. Or invest. Or invest. Investment's yep. hard right here in this valley now. <laughs> yeah. right. Our lives are not there. Right. <laughs> and, and so that's great. But let me let me give you a little a little hack in here. All right. And I want you to watch my head movements. All right. Well, it depends. You look into buy or sell, you look into rent or, or invest, right? Get get proficient with that. Stand in front of a mirror and get really awkward for a little bit and go, are you looking to buy or sell? Are you looking to rent or invest? And then work that down subtly so that it happens just naturally when they ask you, how's the market? Because now that puts it back into their court to go, hey, we were thinking about. So in Joey and I's example, I bet you that if that if as we were tracking down the conversation, she asked me that that question, I would say, well, it depends. Are you looking to buy or sell? Are you looking to rent or invest? She would have said, you know, we're actually thinking about selling this home and, and, and moving into a, we were looking for a single level, single level property, at which point you go, hey, tell me more about that. Tell me what you're thinking. Yeah. And, and then you can start digging into the conversation. In all of this, have I sounded like a used car salesman at any one time, at any time? If I have, please let me know. But my whole goal is to build a relationship, take folks through the no like and trust paradigm. So they know me, they like me, and they realize that my, my intentions are genuine. I'm there to help them. I'm helping, I want to help them either sell their house or find a house that they're looking to move into, right? But it's all about getting to know somebody, getting to know what what their motivation is, how far out they are, but really more importantly, getting to know who they are as a person and who their family is. Okay. Now, you may go through a whole conversation, a whole Ford conversation, and never ever get to the point of real estate. So what do you do then? How do you ask for business? Anybody without looking at the, the, the sheet, how do you ask for business at that point? Anybody got one? You mean after you went through the whole? Yeah, you, you've had a whole conversation. You've talked nothing about real estate. And now you just want to, you just want to say, you know what? I, I would love to right now in my mind, I'm going, Hey, how could I do, how could I do a little bit of, see if I can generate a little bit of business out of this thing, out of this conversation. I usually ask them if there's anything I can help them with. Like, um, sometimes I ask them, well, you know, part of a service I offer for free is a market analysis on your home. Right. Okay. Good. That's one. What else? Anybody else? Ask if they know anyone looking to buy or sell. Asking, yep. Yeah, okay, good. Anything else? Yeah. 
Any others? Shelby, you got one? Um, I mean, I guess just ask for their help. Okay. If, like Lainey said, if they know anybody or if they're um, interested in knowing more about the market or. Okay. Yes. All right. So here's, here's how you set that up though. All right. And I always like to set up and set this up and go, Hey, okay. So, you know, I'm in real estate. I will tell you that I'm really looking to grow my business. Can I get your help with that? Well, sure. Yeah. Why? Yeah. I would love to help you, but you know, we're not looking to buy or sell. I'm not asking, you know, I'm not, that's not what I'm asking. I'm just, what, what I, what I really need to do, what I'd really like to know is, um, Hey, I would love your help grow my business. Who, who do you know that I need to know? I value our friendship so much that I'm sure that I would appreciate knowing some folks that are, that are, that you're, are your friends. Who do you know that I need to know? Can I, I'd love to buy him a cup of coffee, get to know him a little bit more. Or, yeah, I'm trying to grow my business. Hey, do, do you know anybody looking to buy or sell? Well, no, I, I don't necessarily have somebody that I want that is ready to buy or sell right now. Boy, I don't know. Okay, no worries. Tell you what, I'm going to call back. I'm going to call you in a week. Do you, can you give me one name of somebody that maybe you're thinking about that's, that's at least maybe mentioned that they're thinking about buying or selling? Right. If somebody was to come to me and said, hey, listen, I'm trying to grow my business. Can you help? I would be, I would say, you know what? Yeah, let, let, how can I help, right? And now you're offering to them, hey, this is, uh, this is how you can help. Just introduce me to one person that's in your sphere that I, that I, that I need to know. I would love, love for that to happen, okay? So that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it without, uh, saying, um, without sounding like a, a used car salesman, okay? All right, let's see. Let's talk about let's talk a couple of hacks here. Um, it, when you're when you're talking to folks um, and you're having a conversation with them, okay. Hack number one: if you go out to dinner with somebody, go out to lunch with somebody, make sure you finish your food first. Okay, now why? Well, I will tell you that if you ask the open-ended questions and get them talking, then you will ultimately, you will quickly finish your, your food first. There's a principle called the ask principle. It is A-S-K and it stands for ask a question, shut up, and then keep asking your questions. That is, that is ask, A-S-K. So if you're out with somebody eating lunch with them, ask a question and then start eating and let them talk about themselves. Because here's the interesting thing. The person who talks the most in a conversation actually feels like they got the most value out of the conversation. So if you get done, if you take somebody out to lunch and you get them talking, they've talked all about themselves, they're going to get done and go, holy cow, he was amazing. He actually, he, he was really interested in, in who I was and what I was, you know, what I was saying. And they feel super valued in, in all of that. So once again, ask a question, start eating your food. And then when, when, they, you know, when, they, when the answer trails off a little bit, pause, ask another question and start eating your food again. And pretty soon you're going to be done with your hamburger and they're going to be like three bites in going, oh my goodness, uh, boy, I just, boy, I, I've been doing all the talking. And they'd be like, yep, yeah, it's great. I love to, I love to know more about you. And so keep asking, you know, keep asking those questions. Okay. Now, when you ask the question, use open-ended questions. Don't use yes or no questions. Use those, those super open-ended leading questions that's going to get them to think about. So, you know, how's the family? What's everybody up to in the family? You, 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 did, you, did you catch that, Joey, when I asked that, that question? Right? 
And so I frankly, I, I didn't know if you're married. I didn't know if you had kids. So I asked the question in such a way that was completely open-ended so that you could respond with, well, my husband's working and the kids are at school, yada, yada. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm going to ask the next question. Okay, so at kids, and now I'm going to bring it, I, and I even brought it a little bit to the emotional and said, hey, how's mom? You know, how's mom going with, with kids back to school? Because at this point, most moms are like, yes, get the kids back to school. We're tired. We're happy to have the summer over and I'm tired of babysitting the kids all summer. So I'd really love them back in school again. Right. So those are three hacks that I use all the time when I'm talking to folks uh, to really draw out, make them feel valuable um, and then allow them to think that they got the most value out of the conversation. So when they walk away, they go, you know what? I really like hanging out with Jimmy. So yeah, Joey, did you have a question? Okay, great. All right. I'm through my notes. What questions, what questions do you guys have for me? All right, here, I got one for you. What is most, what's, go ahead, Joey. Sorry. So on the Ford, I miss what the R is. Uh, recreation. Thank you. So that's what she did, you know, travel plans. You know, we had the conversation about, you know, wh what, what were your summer plans? Did you have one? And then I always like to go back and then I always like to go forward. Right. So that, and here's why, Joe, here's, here's a good, thank you for asking the question because in a quarter and three months, when I talk to him again, I will have notes that I can call you and go, hey, did you guys, were you guys able to get up to the slopes? Did your kids get um, the, the snowboard lessons? How do they do? My kids are crazy snowboarders. They've been loving it, yada, yada. Now you have a common conversation and they go, oh my goodness, he cared enough to remember about the conversation we had three months ago. Okay. All right. Question for you guys. What is most uncomfortable about picking up the phone and calling your sphere of influence? Seems pretty easy, but everybody seems to have this block about picking up the phone and calling people. Nobody likes to answer the phone. My friends have flat out told me that when I call, they'll just stare at it until it stops ringing and then text me afterwards and ask why I'm calling and not texting. Ah. Um, okay, so Chrissy, this is great, great. Um, when you call them, what do you, what do you, what's the conversation like when, when, you, when you've called them in the past? Um, for example, my half sister, I called her mom at the very beginning when I was just making my rounds, calling everybody, letting them know that I was, a licensed real estate agent now and yeah. I'm here for any of that that they need she called me back in a panic thinking something happened to my sister and I was calling to let her know that oh wow okay yeah. all right so how did how did you respond uh I felt, felt terrible I apologized okay. let her know that it wasn't a big deal that I was just touching base with everybody in my sphere of influence and letting them know that I was out there and um, asking if she need anything along those lines. Right, right. So well, I think what I would have done, here's, here's how I would have responded. Uh, what's her name? Uh, first, Jennifer. Jennifer, I would have said, holy cow, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to, to alarm you. That, that was not the intent. Um, I'm really starting to, I want to engage with the people that I know more, more frequently. Um, yes, I am, I am, you know, I've entered the, the real estate world. And so, um, want, wanted to let everybody know that I'm in real estate and no, at no point did I, was I wanting to say there was something wrong with, you know, with, with, you know, my sister, um, is, you know, so I plan to hear from me here more often and know that when I call, that I am, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not calling to, to get, bring you bad news. I may be calling to either stay in touch or bring you some really, really good news. Okay. Hey, right. thank you. Yeah. So, um, 
but then I don't, you know, I don't, I hope that conversation would go over well. It did ultimately, I just felt really bad afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so now, um, as you're talking, some people like to communicate via text and that's okay too. Because, I, I, sorry, I have but, a question. Yeah. Should we leave a voicemail if they don't answer or try to call back or what do you recommend there? Yeah, I, you know, I, I would leave a voicemail and just say, hey, checking in, seeing how things are going. Um, give me a holler back when you get a chance. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, and then you could even text them and go, hey, just dropped a, a voicemail. Give me a ring when you got an opportunity to want to catch up. Something along those lines. Okay. Good. All right. What else? What else um, is blocks you, blocks you from picking up the phone and calling your sphere? So everybody's going to go and pick up the phone this week and make your re required number of phone calls to your sphere of influence. Yes. I yes. think it's your rejection, right? Ah, oh, tell me more. Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> no one wants to feel rejected. So it's that like, I don't know, like you're bothering them or something. So. Okay. Yeah. Fear, fear of rejection. That's huge, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to give you, okay. You ready? Here's some hacks. All right. Joey, and thank you for, for sharing this. Okay. Because I'm sure that there's there's some other folks on this call right now that are having that same thing, just fear of fear of rejection. Okay, um, how many people have you called that's that's rejected you? That have been a complete jerk to you on the phone? Hold on, Greg. We'll come to you in just a sec. From how my, often, how often does it happen? When you're calling your sphere, how many, how often does it happen that somebody's like a complete jerk and tells you to don't call me anymore? Well, I'm not going to lie. I haven't really tried my sphere. Okay. Uh, mostly my sphere, I talk to them and I chat with them. So okay. they pretty much know, but it's, so it's not my sphere, but it's usually like when I make like a cold call, that's okay. like super hard, but I get it. The sphere, I guess it's, uh, yeah, feels like the same thing. <laughs> I can't say that anyone in my sphere has rejected me or been like, I don't want to help you. Right. That's my point. This is your sphere. These are the folks that you're you're chatting with, right? And you're keeping, you're just keeping in touch with. Those folks aren't going to yell at you. And and to be honest with you, I think out of all the cold calling that I made, I've only gotten one or two people to yell at me. Most people are going, oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. They may not go anywhere. But most people are going to be nice. They're not going to be jerks on the phone. But we already have this. We already have it in, in our mind that people are going to be a complete, you know, jerk and yell at you on the phone. So, you, so that's that fear that keeps you from picking up the phone. Okay. Now, Joey, question for you: um, Did you work your how many how many? Um, how many contacts do you need to, to make every week? Um, how many calls? Every week? Yeah. Um, every week, I would say 50. 50. Okay. So you're at 50. All right. And, and if you remember when we were setting up uh, the funnel, when we were going through the numbers a couple of weeks ago, I said, mm -hmm. for an average new agent, it's going to take 70 conversations to get one transaction. Right. Okay. 70 conversations to get one transaction, all right? Let me put it in a different terms, all right? You got to get 69 no's to get to the one yes. Right. And if you're yeah. not out there striving to get those 69 no's, you're never going to make it. So when you get that one person that yells at you, that one person, did I say that one person that yells at you, they say that one person that yells at you, guess what? It's one of the 69. So chalk it up to one of the 69 and move on and pick up the phone call and, and call the next one. If that's the 44th person that you call, 
and they're a jerk at you, go, oh, that's one more toward the 69. Let me go on to number 45. Right? You get what I'm saying? It's all about real estate is a contact sport. You have to make the contacts. And in a way, we are in the business of no. We've got to get 69 no's to get to that one yes. But if you get, if you have that, if that fear of rejection is in, you know, on repeat in your head, you're never going to get those phone calls made. And guess what? They're not going to be jerks. And I've over-exaggerated completely this, this one person. Every now and then, yeah, maybe, but that, that happens so rare on the phone. Okay. All right, everybody got it? Have I given you, have I, have I reprogrammed, trying to reprogram your mind in a different way to think? Oh, let me go back to Greg. Greg, you said you had, uh, you had a challenge there. I missed you saying sphere of influence. I just heard on the phone people yelling at you. When I cold call, I hear people all the time being upset and just interrupting them. Real easy. You just say thank you very much as one word and hang up on them and call your next number. Yeah. Okay. But I've never had anyone in the sphere. That's they all know me. So who, right. who would yell at me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so Greg, I let me uh Let's step back for just a minute. Let's go outside the this, this sphere because you kind of brought something up there. Um, and we've got a little bit of time here. What, what, what's your conversation when you call people? Uh, it depends on what I'm calling on. I usually okay. have, this is cold calling we're talking about. So yeah, it's calling. script for one idea. Okay. So give me, give me, give me something, you know, what, what is it, what, it, what are you saying for the most people that get mad at you and hang up on you? Uh, most people, it's just that I'm the 95th real estate agent who's called them that day on their expired listing that expired yesterday, and they're upset because they didn't know their home was expired and they still plan on their current agent to uh, sell it for them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's usually where they get upset the most. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Ring, ring, ring. Hey, hey, Greg, Jimmy Clegger here, Coldwell Banker. Um, hey, I'm, I'm calling uh, because I, I see your home just expired. Is that correct? Why are you calling me? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's interesting because, you know, I see your home expired. Did you know it expired? I did. I did not. You, you, you did not. So, uh, oh, wow. So your real estate agent didn't tell you that it expired or that it was coming up on, on being expired and didn't plan, didn't develop a plan around it once it expired or, Hey, th this may be what we need to do uh, to keep it, to get it back on the market. Is that, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So your real estate agent is not doing you justice. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll bet, Greg, that I'm one of probably 15 agents that have called you too. One of 95. Oh, okay. One of 95. That's a lot. Guess what? Let me tell you something, Greg. I have to deal with those other 94 people all the time, and it's rough. So, Greg, let me, let me ask you a question. Um, I would love... To put together a, a in fact you know what i've already i've already kind of taken a preliminary look at your house and i've got an idea of what it would take to get it sold i like to come over tomorrow at two o'clock and present this plan to you so you can see what what it would take to get your home sold does two o'clock work for you it does okay fantastic i will see you tomorrow at two o'clock in the meantime i'm going to email you some some information here what's a good email for you Yeah, I try. I try my best to keep them going. It's just when they get irate, yeah, they no, I'm... hang up before you can even get the next word in. Yeah, well, if they if they hang up, then yeah, chalk them up. Boop, there, there's one and there's move one. on. Next right? one. <laughs> but if you can get a if you can get that kind of conversation going with them, um, and kind of diffuse it and go, yeah, I've got, I've got to work with the, those 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 folks too. So I totally get you. It's kind of like, oh, wait a minute, he's he's coming with a little bit different approach. Right. Mm -hmm. Rather than saying, hey, your home's expired. Can I 
you know, I'd love to to be able to show my marketing plan that's going to, you know, get your home sold when it, you know, in the fastest and the most blah, 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 blah. You know, they've heard that same script over and over and over again. I'd rather, I'd rather come at it with a little bit different tact. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Great. All right. Any other questions? Thanks, Greg, for, for sharing. Any other questions, guys? Because we're, we're wrapping up here. We got three minutes left. All right. Good. Um, I will yield back three minutes of your time. If you guys got any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, I'd love to answer anything for you. Let me see. Oh, there's one in the chat here. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm sure. Yeah, just bit, just the time to make the calls. Ah, uh, time commitment. Yep. All right. I can't help you with time commitment. That's all about sticking it in your in your uh, in your calendar and then honoring the crap out of your calendar, right? So um, you guys can do it. I know you can. So go make your calls this week. Appreciate all you. Take care, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. See you guys.